Splinter Cell franchise. Now I have only played the first four games, so this is going to be a review of Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, Chaos Theory, and Double Agent. I've heard that there's some handheld game or something that I've missed, and I don't really play the handheld games, so that's why. And I also have not yet played Splinter Cell Conviction, the newest one, from this year, I believe. Now, I don't often play the very newest of games, but part of it is also that fairly early on I heard that they were taking a bit of a step in a new direction with the franchise, and I don't think that that is a good idea, especially considering the direction. The new one is apparently more fast-paced action. I don't have a problem with fast-paced action games. I love them, I swear by them. But it goes against what Splinter Cell is. I mean, if you're gonna do that, make a new series, or at least do it as a spin-off, there's plenty of more stealthy, sneaky fun to be had. Now, if this is the first a high-quality series video you're watching, I'll briefly explain. First I'm going to go over the concept for the franchise because that isn't going to change an awful lot from game to game. After that I'm going to go into a spoiler free review of each game chronologically and go over what changes came where, or at least try to. You know, the equipment evolves as the games progress. First of all, you may be wondering what Splinter Cell means. Think of it this way. A division of some branch of the military, army, navy, whatever, might be like a baseball bat to the enemy's head. Meaning, they're gonna take them out, period. That's not always what we want. What you are is one person, so a splinter of the wood in this bat, and you're going to enter the enemy's body, again, the country or area of influence, whatever. And whilst leaving the least amount of mess you can, you're still going to get the job done. You know, a splinter. Not in your mind, not driving you mad, but getting the job done and leaving without anyone realizing that you were ever there. You play as Sam Fisher, a veteran agent, the best field operative of a secretive sub-agency of the NSA, named Third Echelon. It doesn't get much more does not exist on paper than this. The voice of Sam Fisher is that of Michael Ironside. If you don't know him, you may already be able to tell from his last name he is made up of pure awesome. If you do know him, you know that he is. He plays Rash Jack and Starship Troopers, you know, with the arm, and his and his voice echoes with untold amounts of wars fought, people killed. So you're sent into enemy territory, and you're gonna have to make do without backup, with relatively little chance of rescue, and preferably without leaving a body count that is noticeable. Obviously, you couldn't do this without state-of-the-art equipment, nor really nifty physical abilities. Don't worry, you have both. And your equipment isn't, you know, the overdone Q James Bond kind of crap, with wristwatch lasers and such. All of it is based in reality. You can hack, pick locks, and you probably already know about the trifocal goggles, Undoubtedly, the most iconic aspect of Splinter Cell, those babies. As far as visual aspects go, anyway. It offers you night vision, thermal vision, and eventually also EMF vision. I think that's only by the third game. EMF vision allows you to ease your spot electrical stuff. Cameras, lights, because you have a pistol which is fitted with the so-called OCP, which can temporarily short-circuit anything electrical you point it at. So if you see a camera, aim at it, short-circuit it, and get past it before it comes back on. Both of your weapons are both silenced and come with a flash suppressor, so they're really not gonna 
attract very much attention at all. You have a pistol and a so-called SC-20K. The SC-20K is this rifle. Pretty high precision. It can fire over a nice distance. It has both a semi-automatic mode and a fully automatic mode. And it has this launcher attachment under it. And the launcher can be used for such things as rubber projectiles, which just knock enemies out, provided you hit them twice or once in the head. So-called sticky shocker, which attaches itself to whatever it hits and gives it a nice electric jolt. If a couple of your enemies are standing in water and you shoot it into the water, it'll take them all out. You can even use it to fire a recon camera. Now the abilities include the famous image of jumping against two walls so that you wind up with your legs outstretched and you're hanging up there between these two walls and enemies can pass underneath you without spotting you. You can let yourself drop onto them for an easy knockout. You can shoot from up there. You can climb beams and hang from them with your legs and shoot from up there. There's rappelling, you know, where you attach a rope to yourself, to something on the roof of a building. Walk backwards down the side of the building. You can slide down wires. In general, you can really maneuver. Forget walking in the front. Climb to the roof of somewhere or get in through the least secured entrance. One of the very best aspects of this, one of the most impressive, and where this really stands out from all other stealth games that I know of, and granted, I don't play a ton of them, it's basically Splinter Cell franchise, Hitman franchise, and the Commandos franchise. But where this really stands out is the light shadow and sound silence systems. This registers how much light is shining on you as well as how much noise you're making. Now the noise you're making that we've seen before in other stealth titles even in titles that aren't necessarily thought of as stealth titles but while hiding is in other games Hitman Blood Money, Prisoner of War this is really the only game series I know of where how much light is shining on you really makes an impact for how easily you're going to be spotted. Basically, if you're in a lot of light, you can be standing still, you can be crouching, and the enemy will spot you when he comes close enough to see you. Which doesn't have to be right up close and personal, because there's light on you. And you clearly don't belong, you're wearing a black suit, trifocal goggles, you weren't invited. However, if you're in complete darkness and you have a nice little helpful meter on the HUD to let you know how much light is on you, and if that pin is all the way at the bottom, you can be walking slowly next to an enemy and they will not spot you. Again, provided you don't make noise. This really adds a layer of realism to the sneaking. And as you're always looking to find light sources and maybe think of ways to safely aim your OCP at it to temporarily take it out, though that will of course draw attention to it if anyone sees the light go out, or find nice areas in the shadows. You know, how f you know, forget how frustrating it can be to sneak in other games. Yes, that does include the Hitman franchise, because it's not quite clear how close you can get, and if you're properly hidden and all that. Here, it's both that simple and that complex. It's simple because all you really have to worry about is how much light is on you, and it's complex because light can mean, like, a ray of moonlight that happens to hit you from in between two buildings that you were walking next to.